We ended up getting like a Ford Transit, putting a sofa in it, or shoving a sofa in the back of a van, switching these lights on, and it, we just stood back and looked at it and went, right, we're not doing this. This is, we're going to get arrested for doing this. So I was like, what well, looks like that, but it's less creepy. And then it, it sprung to mind about the vintage Volkswagen camper vans, like the hippie buses. Put the studio inside this vintage camper van and it looks sick. Didn't look creepy, looked fun, different. Called Web Summit and said, hey, we want to film inside. And they were like, cool, done. It was the easiest phone call I've ever had to make. And then they sent me a bill of 87,000 euros. So they said, fuck off, basically. So we paid for the van, paid for the production team, and then started on Twitter that we're doing it. We took sign-ups. Was your love for content, like, has it always been there in terms of content creation? Because obviously you had to start a van, but even before that, has it always been a thing in part of your, like, DNA? Yeah, yeah, it has. Like, I, I've, al I've always done it. I've always loved it. It was like food before startups, right? Like, food drinks, hospitality, all that sort of stuff. Loved it. Um, I grew like a food blog in, in Ireland to like the most, was basically the most followed food blog in Ireland for years. Um, did that, got bored. But it, but it wasn't, it wasn't video, right? It was like right. writing. And I was like writing and, photog and photography, which, but I'm a fucking shit at both. No idea how I got such a following <laughs> with it. But, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I just, I always like just people enjoying what I do. I yeah. think that's it, right? I, yeah. I, 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 nothing makes me fucking happier. That, and, and, and arguably even more than, I think I spoke to you about this before, I'm not actually motivated by money. Which like, you know, the only reason I say to the sales team in Dream Factory, we fucking need to hit these numbers. We need to get this cash in. It's just so we can do more of this and do more good shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's basically, yeah. Like the money that we get at Dream Factory is to do what we do greater and better and faster and deliver more value and make more people happy mm -hmm. and have the team in a place that, you know, they don't have to think about rent, rising cost of electricity, all that, you know, all that sort of stuff. When Dream Factory have enough money, where everyone's just good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's basically They're self-sustaining, basically, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. And then, and then obviously, you know, if someone else pops up to try and, and tries to do it, and, and they're like, oh, we're doing this for money, I just don't think it'll work. Not the same. Not the same fucking thing. Not so, close. Because when you was writing, like, back in the day, then how did you get good at it, or how did you know you was good at it? I think I, I, think I connected with people differently than other food bloggers, I just was like, the way I am is absolutely zero bullshit. Mm. You know, I think, started getting invited to restaurant openings and bar openings and stuff that I was like, and some of them I was like, I don't fucking belong here. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you kind of feel a little bit, a little bit strange being there. Mm. But I would just say that. I had this new Mission Star restaurant last night, really fucking weird. Mm. I like, didn't feel comfortable. You know, actually wasn't even all that impressed with the food. You know, you know, it's like, um, I think I connected with people at a level they understood rather than like the 1% of people who want to be going to mission star restaurants. Right? Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Because um, cause you didn't go uni, did you? No. Yeah, because I can't I like dropped out. I went, I went to some shit uni for like maybe a month or two. Yeah, and you just dropped out. I was just like, what am I doing this for? <laughs> right? Like, what am I at? Yeah. It yeah. just was like, what use is this to me? Um, I just didn't, I just didn't like it. I think I always follow... I always follow pa what I'm passionate about, mm. no matter what, and it's kind of impos impossible for, for me to not. This this is this whole podcast is going to sound like a promo video for people not to take on Dream Factory. <laughs> uh, subliminal message: <laughs> Don't take on Dream Factory. Uh, no, I don't give a fuck if they do. But um, I follow it no matter what, and and I I swear it, it's it, you know work late at night. It's always stress. But the reason you get up and do something is because, ah, fuck, I actually love this. Yeah. It's yeah. class. It's amazing when you can find a passion, something that you're passionate about. It's impossible for me not to. Yeah. It's possible for me not to. Uh, you know, when I was in, because the thing is, like, you know, didn't do, didn't do all that well at school, but I enjoyed it because I enjoyed the crack, being around people. Mm. Um, but when I, was, when I was in uni for, like, a month or two months, whatever it was, I was just like, oh, I can't wake up every day and do this. And I loved cars. Obsessive. Me and my yeah. dad talk about cars all the time. Oh, we chat about cars, watching Top Gear, looking at cars, what cars they blah, blah, blah. Um, all the time. And I went, oh, actually, I'm so passionate about cars. I'm in, like, uni just looking at, like, Auto Trader and looking at this and that and reading articles about cars. Blah. And then I was like, right, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to go in and work in a garage and do car sales because I like people, like cars, let's do it, and just follow it. No, just, no. like, laser beam, bang, followed <laughs> it. Um, so that kind of carries through to what I do today, right? Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. Because I mean, this is across four different time zones and 
thousands of staff. It's not going to be easy. Not at all. Not at all. But I know that my mind's going to be like, this is a purpose. This is why we're doing this. Mm. Um, and Scott, it, it is. It just changes people. It changes people's lives, right? Yeah. Um, in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, to to some you know people super philosophical, it might be like not all that relevant, right, in the grand scheme of life. But we have people coming in here with brands that just couldn't afford to do it. Yeah. Point blank. Yeah. You know, and they put their their heart and soul into building what they build, whether it's a B two B SaaS product, whether it's um you know a subscription company, whether it's like makeup, skincare, they put their heart and fucking soul into it. Like I put my heart and soul into this, but then to not be able to show the world in the way that it deserves isn't right. Mm. And then we change that. So it's- it, I mean, you even like, started that work with Startup Van, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah. technically like at the time, you were the only platform that was essentially giving startups an opportunity to kind of share their story. Yeah, um, yeah. Walk me through a little bit about how Startup Van started. So, so when I kind of got bored of the food stuff, I was like started, I love tech entrepreneurship business. I was working for IBM at the time. So obviously a huge tech company in a cubicle, just like, oh, what? <laughs> Not you. Yeah, I was like, what is going on here? I can't, to this day, I can't even tie a fucking tie. To be honest. So I don't know like what I was doing there. I think I got my dad to tie it once. He used to shove it over my head again, to, go, again, yeah, again. to go in. Um, I didn't stoop to like the stretchy tie. <laughs> I was fucking close. Um, but, but I was working there and I was just like, what's this? But I really respected people that had the courage to just go and risk it all, mm-hmm. right? And then I see people that would start companies and they have a wife and they have a kid, they have kids and they have a mortgage and they have all this sort of stuff. I'm like, fuck, you know, I don't have any of that. And I don't, you know, why am I making that leap? And so I just started trying to understand that. Yeah. So I just spun up a website um, and just started emailing people I would see on TechCrunch, Business Insider, um, Forbes, whatever it might be. And I would just say, hey, seeing you've done this raise, really respect what you've done. I have this blog. If I send you like 15 or 20 questions, like I would really appreciate it. I love what you do. And everyone did it. Wow. Everyone was like, sure, Graham, answers below every mm-hmm. time. It was really cool. Um, and just start gaining traction with that. Because what I do is, is it, and, and this followed through into Startup Fan and followed through into Dream Factory. Mm-hmm. So they would share it, obviously, was featured on this blog that had fucking zero readers. <laughs> but I was, hey, it was featured on this blog because I do that now, right? I'm like, oh, hey, this person featured me because it's got cool. It was nice, people yeah. Care, care, yeah. Um, and, and then what happened is they would follow because like, oh, I'll follow it. And then their peers would follow it. Because they're like, oh, yeah, he's featured in this. Mm. Cool, follow that. And then it just kept escalating like that. I think I grew up maybe 25,000 followers on, on Twitter. Um, and then I got really bored of that too. I was like, I just don't think this is creating enough value. Yep. I don't think it's exciting enough. And then Web Summit, was the, the biggest tech conference in Europe, um, was in Dublin because that's where it started at the time. Um, I think there was like 80,000 attendees at that stage, maybe 70, 80,000 attendees. And I was like, I want to chat with founders at Web Summit because this is a once in a year opportunity at yeah. that stage because Dublin's not that big. There's, there's, there's some good founders there, but it's no, nowhere near the level of London. It's a rare opportunity that everyone flies into Dublin. For sure. I want to take advantage of this. What does this look like? Um, and what I did was decide to film at it, having never been in front of camera, having <laughs> never really switched on a camera. Um, <laughs> I was like, right, I'm going to film with this. I, I, I constantly got like, cart before the horse. Yeah. Going to film with this, put up on Twitter to 25,000 followers. I'm filming with founders at like Web Summit. Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, great. I want to be featured, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, one of my colleagues at IBM, um, he was into tech and business, and he was like, oh, I'd love to do it with you. And then we started a new brand, and we were like, right, how, how are we going to do this? And then... How did you go about that conversation? Because especially if you had done a lot of the legwork up until that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was coming in to essentially assist. How did you Yeah, well, he had a blog, he, he had a blog too. Okay. He had a blog too, yeah. He started after me, he seen mine, he's like, oh, I want to start with two and start his. Um, Were you guys friends originally, originally? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got on well and for yeah. drinks and worked together, worked beside each like literally beside each other. Um, and then, yeah, we're like, where are we going to, and we called a production company, couldn't turn on a camera. And, and we met them in, in, in Dublin and they were like, well, where are you going to film? And we said, inside Web Summit. Inside the arena in, yeah. in Dublin, 
And they're like, oh, it's going to sound really shit, guys. It's going to be like so, so 80,000 people in a room. We don't understand any of that, right? <laughs> so 80,000 people in a room and you're going to film, uh, it's going to sound shy and it's going to look like everyone else. You need to get a film studio, right? Getting expensive already. So like film studio. Tried to call some, but there was none anywhere near. I think it was a half hour drive to the nearest thing we could mm-hmm. ever call a studio. Um, and, and in reality, no viewers, new brand, People are coming to Dublin for this tech conference. Who's going to do an hour round trip no, plus an hour interview? Just going to be no, I'm not doing. So how do we bring a studio there? And we ended up getting like a, a Ford Transit van, yeah. putting a sofa in it. That was like the creepiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> it you was two, like two blocks put in a sofa inside the back of a van. Yeah, it, it was on cameras and all. It was sketchy. And then I remember it was like it was October in Dublin, so it was like pissing rain. We're shoving this sofa in the back of the van, switching these lights on, and it, we just stood back and looked at it and went, right, we're not doing this. This is, We're going to get arrested for doing this. It's like, <laughs> it's mental. And then, but I was like, what, what? Because this is, we're onto something, because we can drive this to that summit. Yeah. And it's like, kind of cozy, but weird looking from the outside. So I was like, what looks like that, but it's less creepy. And then it, it sprung to mind about the vintage Volkswagen camper vans, like the hippie buses. Yeah. So what I did was, got one of the, went on owner's clubs, and found like an old lady just outside Dublin who had one, 1959 camper van, worth serious cash, mm-hmm. like insane. And she didn't have a breeze what I was talking about, obviously. Um, but then we paid her and she gave it to us. It was mental. Nice. Um, and for not even that much money. She was like, oh, can you send me some photographs of it? I was like, yeah. <laughs> sure. <exactly. laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, and then put the studio inside this vintage camper van and it looked sick. Yeah. Didn't look creepy, looked fun, yeah. different. Um, called it Startup Van because you couldn't fucking think of a better name. <laughs> uh, and, and then we just basically announced, we shot a promo video with founders at Web Summit, called Web Summit and said, hey, we want to film inside. And they were like, cool, done. It was the easiest phone call I've ever had mm-hmm. to make. And then they sent me a bill for 87,000 87, euros. Excuse me? Yeah, exactly what I said. I was like, right, is that for paying us? Are we paying you? What's happening here? Yeah. They're like, oh, well, Amazon or Microsoft would pay us that much for that square footage because we're a conference that's how we make money and I was like well I'm Come not Amazon on. right so they said fuck off basically yeah nah we don't care I was like fuck so we p- paid for the van mm-hmm. paid for the production team and then started on Twitter that we're doing it we took sign ups again car before the horse mm-hmm. just say we're going to do it and then be like oh shit what's going to what's going to happen now so what we did was we pulled up into Temple Bar where obviously everyone goes out drinking I was like where is people where are people going to be in Dublin yeah. probably in Temple Bar Pulled up there, dropped a pin on Twitter, and you know, 20 minutes later, there was a queue like halfway through Temple Bar. Founders wanted to be interviewed. It was mental. And people just kept joining the queue, joining the queue. Wow. And at one stage, it was a three-hour wait to get, wow. to get started wow. on. It was absolutely insane. And we did that for three days in a row. You must have been exhausted. Yeah, it was tiring. Yeah, so it was 7 a.m. to 3 a.m. for four days in a row. Um, it was mental. Hundreds and hundreds of interviews we were releasing Web Summit footage before Web Summit did themselves. Smart. Um, so an editor would come in and, gr- and get the drives at like 3 a.m., take them home, edit it, and we'd release them at 7 a.m. the next morning with the Web Summit and Startup Fan hashtag, yep. which means that people who got interviewed would reshare it. Way before they even see the Web Summit. Yeah, it was, it was insane. So, so the tre- I, can, I still have the screenshots this summer, but trending throughout the whole of Web Summit was Web Summit Startup Fan, Web Summit Startup Fan. That's the biggest tech conference in Europe. And we pulled the startup band thing out of our ass like you know, a week before. It's like out of crisis, you came up with something amazing. Yeah, like that, it's you know? insane. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, Monday morning, squeezing that tie over my head again <laughs> to, go, to go back into IBM. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's such a, because people are like buying us gifts. People are inviting them like, oh, come to our, because these are from all over Europe, right? It was like, yeah. come to our space in Italy. Like, come hang out, come film with founders. And we're all excited, yeah, 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 And they were like, oh, we don't have any cash to do any of this. Mm. Um, and then we're handing out these business cards to people that had like a Gmail on it because we didn't even have a domain yet. Um, and we opened it up and obviously there was founders saying, thanks so much, founders inviting us to their spaces and co-working spaces and incubators and accelerators all across Europe, which is really nice. And then there was like Microsoft, Intel, Salesforce, Sage, all these like corporates mixed in who basically said, we paid Web Summit a lot of money to do you know, an activation at, at the conference, yeah. and we basically got nothing or very little, yet there's queues for this startup van. Yeah. So how do we get involved? And a couple of days later, went, flew to London for the first time, 
had never been in London before, so flew to London and went to the Shard um, and met Stephen Kelly, who, who was chairman of Tech Nation, but then back then uh, CEO of Sage. And he was basically like, we don't want to change anything with Startup Fan. We want to support it. That was it. And then signed a deal with Sage to go to Chicago that for like three that. weeks. Yeah, I went home and quit my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> went home and quit my job. And I was yeah. like, well, this is it. Um, and and, and we, signed, we signed for that. And we went to we went to Chicago for three weeks to film with startups. We were mm-hmm. on like TV in Chicago, radio in Chicago. So in a really, sh- in like four weeks, it went from like, you know. Could you see that happening like so quickly? No. No? No, it was mental. Yeah. The whole thing was crazy, right? And then it kind of felt like, I'll never forget walking out those revolving doors of IBM, kind of going, oh, this is what it feels like. Because I'd interviewed so many founders, of right? Um, but then always knew in the back of my head, I'm going into the IBM place. That's like what this is. But that doesn't really feel like who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to do something. I never forget walking out. Um, and I, and, and I, lo- I, like I said, I love cars. But, you know, to try and try and fund this thing, like, I, you know, I'd walked out of IBM got on my car, which was really nice, because I earned good money in IBM, and then I was like, I drove off to sell it. Straight away? Yeah, I wasn't getting rid of this. So I sold like my dream car, yeah. because I was like, I, I need to make this work. Yeah. Um, so I walked out the door, but I was getting rid of something that I really enjoyed. Going, people who don't like cars probably go, oh, you sound like a bell end, but I really love that thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like, a, it didn't even cross my mind not to sell it. Mm-hmm. Drove it, sold it probably for less than I should have, um, to give myself personal runway to go and build this thing. Um, and then did that for seven years. Traveled the world interviewing founders, mm. corporate sponsorship model. Um, was incredible. And then, I don't think anyone knows this, I haven't said it publicly, but, but um, we had a sponsorship deal with uh, Volkswagen to basically travel the world interviewing founders, fits with their vintage Volkswagen thing, course, yeah. and then COVID hit. And it was just like, that's not happening, obviously. Yeah. Um, but there's worse things in the world. People were dying, people were losing relatives. It was like, well, fuck could be worse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then I just kind of sat around. Yeah. Basically. Like everyone else did. <laughs> I just sat in my flat in Shoreditch going, fuck. What's going on? Yeah. What's go- what the fuck's going on? Um, it was a mad time. Everything just screeched to a halt, right? And like all income stopped overnight. Because how were you, um, like I guess how was the funding coming through? Because you signed a deal with Sage. Like, was it, was a, it was a corporate sponsorship, yeah. Okay. So, so, so they, they were just funding like all the... Your salaries, productions, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, salaries, production. It was a profitable company, right? Yeah. It was like, um, it was really good. Um, anything that you have eyeballs on, anything that people watch and consume, is, is, you know, if you do it the right way, you can monetize it. Yeah. Um, and not through like YouTube ads and stuff, but like direct, like corporate sponsorship. Um, but obviously, you know, not only was the world traveling thing not going to happen, any form of sponsorship wasn't going to happen. And then mm. there was a question of, do we do Zoom interviews? It's not the same. My answer was no, right? I was like, I, I spent so long trying to do things better yeah. than anyone else. And all of a sudden, there's this level playing field. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. What, was, what was the best interview over those, ex- those seven years that you think you had? I enjoyed a lot of them. Yeah. I, I, think, I think the one with, with Gary V was mm-hmm. like... How did that come about? Um, I didn't know who he was. And then I spoke to a friend of mine... In Dublin, he's like, Gary V's coming to Dublin. Like, oh, sick. Mm. Who's that? <laughs> uh, and, and then kind of messaged, we were tweeted him. And, I'm, I'm, and I started consuming his videos, right? Because I'm like, I don't know who this dude is. So yeah. I started watching his videos and people get slightly addicted to Gary V in the early stages. Um, and you probably get bored pretty quickly. But, but to get, you know, immediately you consume and you get addicted to it, which kudos to him. It's really good. Um, and then he said in this video, if you're going to ask me for something, deliver value. Yep. Right? Don't you go, hey, Gary, I need you to sign this jersey. Or, hey, Gary, I need you to, it's like, deliver me value, and I'll listen. And then we tweeted him and his videographer and basically said, um, basically something along the lines of, you're in the middle of Dublin at a tech conference next week. It's going to be an hour for you to get to the airport. It's going to cost you like 60, 70 euros in a taxi. Um, we have startup van. It's like, we take you to the airport free. We interview you in the way, so it doesn't cost you any extra time. You get a free taxi ride. Fair. And he was like, and then D- D-Rock, his videographer, was like, in, drop me a mail. Mm-hmm. And that was it, it was done. Nice. And that actually resulted in lots of cool stuff for us. Fucking really cool stuff. But the coolest thing that resulted in was um, a couple of weeks ago. And bear in mind, this is like five years, four years ago, mm-hmm. five years ago. And the coolest thing to happen from that happened a few weeks ago, which I haven't said on camera yet, but people have seen it. Where basically I put up that story about how I got Gary V and Startup Van. And some guy goes, you know, something along the lines of, like, prove it. 
or like, oh yeah, how, how much did you have to pay him or something like that? Well, someone actually wrote that. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I didn't. He did it because I delivered value. And he was like, you know, screen, he goes, if you screenshot that this happened, I'll give a thousand pounds to charity. And then I screenshot the tweet. Yeah. Go, there you go. Cancer Trust UK, please. And then he goes, no, no, not the tweet. I need you to, like, you know, emails. Who is this person? Dope, who was like a recruiter who's just trying to, like, be smart. And then I went into my emails, screenshot it, put it up, and, like, it, it, it has loads <laughs> of comments. It was so funny. And I was, like, I, like, tagged, like, uh, I tagged, like, the Cancer Society in it. Yeah. Um, and he goes, like, oh, I've been calling people out for the bullshit on LinkedIn for years. First time I've been proven wrong. Kudos, Graham. And then he screenshot the thousand pounds to cancer. That's Charity. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, I don't know yeah. what it is about people not wanting to... Like, everyone's just so cynical these days. Yeah, and I well, there's like, a lot of bullshit on Twitter and on, on LinkedIn. Anyway. Yeah, but it's like you telling that story out. It's a cool story, but it's like, what does he gain from even trying to do that? But, hey, cancer, cancer research and the next yeah. one grand. Yeah, so yeah. Good. It's perfect. Yeah, it's so good. But, yeah, it's just funny how stuff like that, you know, yeah. can lead into cool things. Like No, for sure, for sure. Because over that experience, like, you would have seen a lot of the startups that I'm prominent now when they were just in the early stages, yeah, right? Yeah. Um any major surprises would you say? <sighs> Some really major surprises because mm. I think I think you spot I think you speak to a founder and you kinda go, right. Like Michael Acton Smith years back, four or five years ago, like I'm building a Nike for mental fitness. Mm. That's calm, right? Yeah. yeah. Um really good dude. Yeah. Really good dude. Super focused, laser focused, track record. Um but you know a tagline like that, building the Nike for mental fitness. It's mm. like, right, fuck, big tagline. But you could see it in it. And then, like, you know, fast forward years later, and he's like, you know, Smashed selfies it. with LeBron in LA, and LeBron mm. works, you know, and it's just like $2 billion valuation, all this sort of stuff. So I wouldn't say surprise. I'd say more like, you know, proud to have, like, an interaction with someone like know. that early days and then see, see the journey. Because could you see, like, particular traits of the ones who became the most successful, like when you were speaking to them? Were there like any telltale signs, do you reckon? I think, yeah, I think there's focus on someone like that is next level. Yeah. Roberta Luca, I interviewed her at the same time. She owns Bosses Studios, video games company. Mm -hmm. It's just this unwavering confidence that they're going to win. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's, uh, that's the only, that's the thing, because I could say, you know, oh yeah, they're just really intelligent or this or that, and, and they are, but, but it's more the, we're building this and this is what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, because so, cause I can t I interviewed so many founders that does, someone just doesn't have the conviction. Mm. You know, you, you just don't it. just don't fully. They say it because they probably whiteboarded it with their co-founder of like, hmm, what's it tagging or what should we say we're trying to achieve here? And they try and convince themselves, which is so obvious, right? Mm. Um, but it's the, uh, the unwavering conviction that they're going to make it. Yeah. I mean, even for you from a personal perspective, like how did you build that conviction as well? Because especially off the background of like, you had picked up some projects, got them successful, mm. got them bought, got bored, shelved it. Yeah. Then now you're doing something else, but this time you have another partner on board. So it's not just your responsibility. It's like, mm. it's like your responsibility. How did you build up your conviction in say, like start a van and saying, this is what I want to say, focus the next five to seven or 10 years even yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's how you feel when you wake up every day. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, I think early days with startup van, um, I think it was interesting because I had like a vision for what that should be, a vision of where it should go. And my co-founder at the time was like, you know, we spoke earlier on in this about, um, you know, the strengths and weaknesses and you know, what I'm good at and what I'm bad at. And I think that yin and yang balanced out yeah. early stages with me and him, right? You know, fi knows finances inside out, super organized, everything that I'm not. Um, and so super early stage, like, right, this is where it's going. I have this conviction. We're going to build this huge me media brand. And it was that. Um, it's how you feel when you wake up every day, I think. Yeah. It drives you through mm -hmm. every single day. If you don't have that, it's really difficult. But as things, you know, I don't know if I'll ever have a co-founder again. Probably not, to be honest, right? What's changed? What's changed? Yeah. I think when you have, when you have the focus that I have on, on winning and achieving something and doing, doing something the right way, it, it, it kind of, maybe this is just a flaw in, in myself, but, you know, I find it hard to compromise on something if I have my, my heart set on it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, 
not in personal life. I compromise a lot in personal life, and that, that's that's a part. It's a part of it. Uh, just in case my girlfriend's. Uh, <laughs> but 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 in business, I'm just very much you know this is the goal, this is the vision, and then to wake up every day and go after it and have that fire in your belly to go after it. And I think l- l- the latter years with Startup Van, you know, he's still a great dude, but but different visions of where it should go. And then what would happen was you'd meet in the middle, but meeting in the middle is never good enough for me, mm. right? Meet in the middle is just not it. I don't meet in the middle with business. I'm like, this is the goal, this is the vision, this is what we do. Like I said earlier on, it's written in blood that New York's launching in October, and that's happening. Yeah. If that had to be, oh, well, let's, you know, maybe we'll do July, and then we end up in February, I wouldn't wake up at the fire going, okay, February then. It, it's just, no, this is it, we have to go. Mm. So I would probably find it difficult to have a co-founder again, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, definitely super senior members of staff to help me build this amazing but but I ultimate and I listen to everyone right I, mm-hmm. I think the staff to come to me you know Benny comes to me and was like oh dude I think we should do this we should get this here's what, what we should do it's like right you know more than me with this stuff so let's do it um but ultimate big company vision of of where this is going I fucking find it hard to compromise right yeah yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's really ultimately why I was like I'm not doing startup on anymore Mm. So was it like um, we don't have to talk about this? If you don't. Want to talk about no, it's good. It's good. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Was it like because I guess in the early days things start rosy and then you have like the issues, the conflict, and the rest of it. Like, how do you work through conflict? Because I've been in situations with like other co-founders beforehand uh-huh. where things aren't necessarily in the right place, but sometimes the goodness can outweigh the bad times, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you have to have those frank conversations where. To the lead up to it, it feels worse than actually having the conversation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then I'm someone as well, like, I'm not very good at expressing my emotions, mm. which isn't good in a co-founder relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you even asked my wife about yeah, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like, how, do you, how did you deal with conflict? Same as you. Yeah. Same as you, yeah. Have a call, massively unhappy about it. Wrong vision, wrong direction, wrong angle not exciting enough um and then i come off the call and just fucking bitch and moan to everyone else mm. basically mm. And, and then you know what i'm sure he did the same yeah yeah which yeah. again why probably why it didn't work right yeah. i'm sure he come off to his girlfriend or his brother and his family and be like graham thinks we should do this i think we should do that blah 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 he's another clue and i'm on the other side saying <laughs> the same the same thing right um but but at the end of the day i, I think things being watered down are not good yeah, I think that's what I will say, right? Like we don't water down anything at Dream Factory. It's we go for it a hundred percent every single time, and I think I would want to do something crazy. He would want to, you know, do something not so crazy, and we meet in the middle. And then eventually, what happens was, and it's really important for people watching this who want to, you know, any corporate sponsorship angle. If you meet in the middle with stuff and you don't push boundaries, yeah, you don't get the money you deserve. You don't get the conversations even sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's the effort, it's doing something a little bit outside the box, it's pushing back, it's just fucking doing something that no one's seen before. Mm-hmm. You know, startup van, you know, stuff has been done now, similar and blah, blah, blah. At the time, it was like, fuck, oh, that's fucking yeah. cool, right? Yeah. Whereas if we just, you know, a compromise would be, well, the van's going to be complicated and it's going to be expensive and where are we going to park it? And you can come up with a million reasons not to do something. Um, and we would just end up being in the Ford Transit, or we would end up just just shooting it inside the thing. It never would have become anything. And I wouldn't be here today mm. if it wasn't for actually just going for something and doing for something next level. Mm. I wouldn't be sitting here today in Dream Factory without it. And that's what I think all the time. It's in my fucking head all the time. Like, no matter when we do something, like this building, to not raise money and to move into this you know, iconic building in East London, one of the most iconic buildings in East London without raising, it's a mad thing to do. Yeah. Really, right? Yeah. I think yeah. anyone with a sensible head would just go, well, let's just knock into next door in Rivington Street. Let's yeah. like baby steps this. This has been the biggest leap the business has ever seen, the best thing we've ever done so far. Mm. Um, so watering stuff down, meeting in the middle, not for me. I've, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, like the rational brain versus the irrational brain. Yeah, and yeah. Growth, like the most danger, but also the most growth comes from that irrational side of you. Yeah. And like when you literally just say, fuck it, like, let's just go for it this yeah. way. Like, if it, if it was better to be strong and wrong than be safe and fail kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All day, yeah. all day long, do the maddest thing. Mm. Do the maddest thing possible. 
because if it doesn't work, you're like, I did. The thing is, if it doesn't work, you can yeah. go, try this mad thing that no one thought would work and it didn't. They were right, how funny is that? Versus being mediocre and it not working and going, oh, you didn't even. That wasn't that interesting and it didn't work. It's worse, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's just worse. It's a different. <laughs> it's, really it's worse, yeah. for sure. So that's what I'd say. And then, and then Startup Fan didn't. But you know what? I really, you know, I think when I made the decision not to do it anymore, it was like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. Um, but then there's a huge weight on my shoulders, right? About what's next? About what's next? Because where do you go? Yeah. Right? Not, you know, not college educated, don't have a fancy degree. I, I, in my head at that time, I was like, I can't really do anything. <laughs> right? <laughs> I can sit in a van and chat to people or I can, you know, but like, where, like you know, where's it going? So you have this weird, uh, you have this weird moment where you're like, I am absolutely fucking useless that's crazy though because you'd spent the last seven years building a business yeah and to come out of that and say oh i can't do anything i that's know mental. i know but it's, it's honestly was just it, that was all i was thinking yeah i cannot do anything um and then i was gonna do like a like i'll come up with business idea because i've constantly come up with ideas to do mm. i was like oh, oh come up like, i'm talking to founders by pitching them like, this idea for that and this idea for this and Again, conviction. I just don't think they even sense it in me, right? I think yeah. they were like, well, you're probably scrambling for like, <laughs> I need to do something. Um, I was probably scrambling around a little bit, which, which is fair. Um, but I think when, when I started speaking about Dream Factory and wanting to help, because I got asked for years, yeah. can we use your startup and production team because we want to do a crowdfunding video? Mm. I was like, no, because owning a production company is something I never wanted to do still don't want to do because that's not what Dream Factory is right um, can we use your gear no because if you break it then we're fucked uh, can we use your studio no because that's our brand the backdrop is our brand it's kind of yeah. weird um, I end up saying no for a long time that's what I was thinking yeah, um, yeah. it's like you were very focused on saying you were on production had to be but everything goes. yeah it had to be I get so distracted all the time yeah, but it, it, it's it's I do you know what I bought the other day what? the team I haven't seen a set they were laugh at me I bought like an egg timer okay yeah like if like a tw like a like a twisty <laughs> a twisty, egg, one, yeah. a twisty egg timer that yeah. has sixty minutes on it yeah and I need to like just set that egg timer on my desk and write sixty minutes I'm not doing anything else other than this <laughs> <It's> mental <laughs> but but because I get distracted by so much stuff um, but with Dream Factory obviously you know raising this round of funding right now it's uh, additional services are coming up and extra revenue and what we could do and I could talk for nine days yeah. about extra revenue we can get with Dream Factory honestly of course yeah. right we've a trusted community of people who create content people who people who can afford to pay us that money probably have other money and probably have other needs fact right um, but we create the best content that startups could usually never afford and that's what we do and that's the, that's the lane we're staying in mm -hmm. um, and yes we'll branch into other things but, but for right now that's what we do best um <sighs> It's hard because I'm um, I'm similar. I have like shiny, shiny, oh, shiny items yeah. syndrome, um, and then now that's why the last say like couple of months I've been saying to myself, okay, because usually if I've got ten things to do, mm. I like to try and progress them all at the same time, but it just takes so much more longer. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm getting to the point where okay, if I'm starting something, I need to finish it before yeah. going to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. Because yeah, like when you're distracted, just not on the game and you're not able to give your full self to what you're trying to do. For sure. And then as you were saying, like, when you do a shitty job at something, no one's happy. No. Like, it's not going to be the great thing that you could have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. You know, um, and then, uh, but it, it's a, it was a big, it was a big thing where people started believing in the Dream Factory thing before it was a thing, right? Yeah. That's where I knew it. Well, people were like, great, we need to do this. Yeah. How did the idea come about then? Well, I was just thinking, well, I spoke mm. to a lot of founders, right? I'm such a loser. My WhatsApp's just full of founders. I mean, you've been doing it for how long? Like, you can't even say my WhatsApp full of founders. They're like your friends, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. right? And I, and I care about all of them, right? And what they do and what they achieve and, and everything. And, but, but you speak to them during lockdown. I was like so fucking bored. Considering mm. what my day looks like now versus what my day looked like two years ago, mental. Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand how we even got through it because <laughs> I just need to go and move and... Um, but being locked in a locked in a flat is like it's not good. Yeah. Because um, were you in London or were you in Dublin? I was in London. Yeah, okay. I was yeah. in London, just around the corner from here, and I was just like, oh. But I just talked to people to distract myself, um, and I just started asking them when COVID goes. Actually, I need to. I needed to see an end. Uh, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. I was yeah. like, COVID's gonna go away. COVID fucks off. What content do you do? Right. Yeah. 
you're locked in a house now, you're like doing these like Zoom things that look a bit shit. It's not doing your brand any fucking use. Mm-hmm. When, it got, when it ends, what are you going to do? And I would basically brainstorm with these founders. And they get super excited, right? Like, oh, I'm going to do a YouTube series, I'm going to have a studio audience, I'm going to do it every week, blah, blah, blah. I go, that's sick. Mm. Come off the call, next person, I'd just be chatting to people. Because naturally, it would lead to content, obviously. And then I would catch up with them like a few weeks later, and they'd go, I go, any progress in this? Did you chat to your co founder? What do you think? I'm like, yeah, we kind of looked at it, but we just don't have the money to do it, Graham. Like, it's just unfeasible, but it's a cool idea, but it's just unfeasible. Mm. I go, all right. So I wrote down like money or cash or runway, or whatever word they said got to do with money. And then I'd move on, and then I'd know, right, these other people have money. I'm like, what's their issue? So I'd start asking people who I know who've raised rounds of funding. Like, early days, startup fan people who've maybe raised five, yeah. six million. Ask them, why aren't you doing better content? Why aren't you doing a series? Why haven't you done a podcast? Why does your pro- product photography look like that? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Um, and then they'd be like, Graham, why did you keep calling us asking us this? <laughs> um, but, but they'd just be like, uh, we don't have the expertise, right? We just, we just don't really know, to be totally honest, right? Um, I'm an operations person. My co-founder is a techie person. We just don't have that um, creativity. I'm like, right, creativity, don't have a clue. Yeah. And then the third one was time. Right, so it's money, time, expertise. That was it. And I kept hitting these brick walls talking to founders. Money, time, expertise. One of the three. Nothing else actually ever came up. Mm. No one said they didn't want to do it. Mm. No one said they were shitty. I, like, you know, oh, it's a shitty idea trying to do better content. No one will ever say, oh, I don't want to do better content. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, so I started going, right, how do I solve the money thing first? Because if I launch a production company and make it cheaper, it's a cheap production company. Yeah. Race to the bottom. What yeah. use is that? And the margins are so tight. There's any production company people watching. I'll, I'll, there's loads of following me on LinkedIn. I'll share this. Margins are tight. So to go off and try and cut, undercut that is just really tough, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the time thing takes so much time, planning and effort and finding freelancers and finding a space to film and you know, all the sorts of stuff. It takes ages to, to plan out. And then, and then the expertise thing is just, they don't know. Yeah. What, what makes it good? What makes yeah. it bad? What, how, do we even, how do we plan this out? What does that look like? And without, and then it all loops back in. Without the money, you don't have the people to help you do it. Um, and then consistency is another thing. Like I saw people, you know, they will do killer video, and then they'll That's fucking it. milk it for <laughs> two years. And I'm like, I've fucking seen this video on LinkedIn every day for two <laughs> years. Fucking sick of it. Do something else. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, I started going money, time, expertise, and I was like, how do we do it? And then kind of figured out that if I have like a self-contained location that people come to, it saves like the production company thing of running all around. Mm. Um, we buy our own gear, we don't have to rent it. We get super talented people in-house who actually give a shit about these startups. It will be a better experience. Mm. Because a lot of times, you know, production people, like videographers, editors, it's like, they want to do like super creative stuff, right? They want to make the short movies, which is really cool and it helps. Face to face with a founder talking about stuff, that's not a shit. Yeah, care less. Like just glazed over. But mm-hmm. the team here, at Dream Factory, like is interested, right? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, so then, then Dream Factory came about unlimited content creation, five k to seven k per year, video, audio. I mean, it was it was nine 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 to begin with. <laughs> was, Pre inflation, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's Dream Factory inflation. That's what we call it, DF inflation. Um, yeah, it was so funny because we launched at nine nine nine. But like I, I think I said it earlier, I don't even know if we were, we were recording, but we said it earlier yeah. that people said, I have a screenshot from, from Mills, from us two, mm-hmm. who's crazy and a legend, but, but screenshot from him, and I need to send it back to him, but he basically said, what founders are going to pay you £999 to do this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was like, well, loads. Yeah, seven X that. And look how many people. Were yeah, there. yeah, yeah, for sure, right? Mm-hmm. But but I get it. It was so it was pre Dream Factory. Mm-hmm. I think we forget sometimes that we just, we invented this, right? This didn't exist before. Still doesn't exist now. Someone may try it in the future, but right now it doesn't. It, we're the only ones doing it. So I get with people like, who's going to pay this? Like, you know, startups have no money and blah blah blah. Which is an interesting an interesting thought, right? It's like, you know, startups have no money. It's a myth, right? You start up to have money, but it's just where they choose. Where they to. choose to spend it. Exactly, yeah. right? Um, so, but then obviously, you know, we, we got more gear, we got more staff, our quality went up, mm-hmm. um, we got this new building, like things change, um, and then and then price has gone up. But we've frozen the price at the at the last place. So yeah. if you if you join Dream Factory, you haven't raised any money, 
and you, you, you know what strategy you want, you don't need strategy, it's still 3K per year mm-hmm. to join the other one. Mm-hmm. If you're just, give me, give me the original site, and that's all I want, I want to come shoot, um, it's still 3K per year. It's still a good price. I think one of the things that's also quite commendable is when, you know when you want to sign up to like a product or service, and you go on the website, mm. they don't tell you the price. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I hate that when it happens. Yeah, you have yeah, to go yeah. through it. Like you guys are very, very much upfront about what you're getting, and when you come and see us, like it saves everyone sense. time. Mm-hmm. Saves everyone time, right? Yeah, we didn't put the price on the website with people calling, going, oh, "Is this fifty quid? What's yeah. crack?" <laughs> no, um, but it's just yeah, super transparent because mm-hmm. I think I understand how founders think. Mm-hmm. I've been a founder long enough. I've met. I've met endless founders mm. i know how they think they don't want to go onto a website and not see a price mm. they don't want to go on the website and not understand what they're getting they don't want to come to a space and not be understood um i just get it I get it to its fucking core and we're just getting stronger yeah the 300 startups now as dream factory members um we've with the new building we've capacity for a thousand in east london um and we're just learning every we're, we learn what works every single day um, and I also understand the struggle. I, I, you know, it's it's not that long ago that you know, I put the keys in the door of our original site, and I had no runway, zero, nothing. I had a day, if even. It was, it was uh, and my investors who put money in were like, "Graham, you, you have no money when you put the key in that door. You know, how are you going to pay yourself? You haven't hired anyone yet. Like, how's it going to work? I was like, "It's going to make money." And I was in another podcast a couple of months back like two months ago or something, with, with another Dream Factory member. Um, and then she said, yeah, when I joined Dream Factory, you didn't have cameras, right? But that just goes to show, if you believe in the conviction, which always comes back to it, because I remember tor- touring her around Dream Factory, my ultimate conviction that we are the greatest space for startups to create content in the fucking world. And she went, and, and uh, she's a bootstrap founder, and she went, well, I'll send you the money today, I want to be part of this. And then she, she only, it only registered with her two years later. Actually, I, there was no cameras when I signed up, right? It's that conviction. It's, it's so interesting. Like, it just comes straight back to that, right? Yeah. How was it when you were raising funds? Because, like, you mentioned one person who essentially passed. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. like, especially you'd gone through such an easy start phase with startup van where someone basically handed you money and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. go do your thing. Yeah, yeah. But this time it's COVID, you're freaking mm. shit out. Like, how was that whole process? People thought it was funds? mental. Yeah. People thought I was fucking mental. A lot of people, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like you like that when people think you're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but also I want money off them. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, so far you think I'm crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, 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 was, it was tough, right? It was just like on calls going, I'm going to open a physical space. And then you see their eyes glaze over going, do I end this call now or do I put up with this for the next 29 minutes? Um, and, and these were great people that came to introductions, right? And, and they were just like, you know, what you've done before is really cool. And, you know, this sounds, this sounds nice, but we're in the middle of COVID, right? And then, and then the couple of people who could get past the COVID thing, who are optimists, like COVID will go away. But when COVID goes away, you know, you're going to have capacity issues. It's not going to be good. It's, you know, how are you going to scale past your original site? How does that work? You know, it's a big risk and all this sort of stuff obviously came up. Um, and, and it was tough, but there was, there was investors who just believed in it, right? And, and, and I emailed all those investors yesterday. I was like, you know, we're raising a round of funding now. At this. Oh, you went back to your first original list and said, we're going for a second round. Yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. all knew. They all knew. But, but I kind of just got them all an email yesterday to say... Um, I think I said something along the lines of, you know, it's not that long ago we raised this amount of money at this valuation and you all were either crazy or stupid enough to give me this money and now it's at this valuation, right? Congrats. (laughs) 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 Uh, uh, It's it's funny, right? It's like not that long ago they put that cash in and they've, they've, on paper at least, they've they've, they've done really well and, and, uh, and I'm eternally grateful for it, right? And and when we're all said and done, everyone's gonna everyone's gonna win. But they're gonna win money wise, and that's cool. But but a lot of them don't actually need it, to be fair, right? Um, they're they're in it for the ride. But I think it's more. I'm just really excited about when that time comes. Um, that I can deliver a return to them. That it's it's more about the win than the money, right? It's about wow, this was like, it's gonna be weird because if you know four or five six years time, however long it is away, that I can I give give them that that big return. COVID's going to seem like a distant memory, right? It's going to be like, wow, that was like, you started that during that thing. That's crazy. It's um, honestly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the team as well. My, my, what, what I 
literally dream about all the time is when the day comes that me and the original people that build Dream Factory just never have to worry about money again. They can work, they can not work. They can launch a business, they can make m- music, they can do short films, they can dick around, they can invest money in people they believe in themselves and delivering that to them. When that time comes, that is when I'm like, right. Do you make your stuff like um, shareholders? Yeah, so we're working on getting that now before this race because I want to get it on the original valuation, right? Um, and there's a thing called EMI, an EMI scheme, which means that I have to pay, um, instead of paying 40%, um, 40% on tax, yeah, it's 10%. So it's like it's working through that now. Um, but it's just so important to me, right? And when that time comes, that's a proud, a proud moment for mm-hmm. sure. So now that you've gone through all these experiences, like what, do you, how, what, what would you say you know that you're good at in terms of your strengths now? Because obviously we know vision is definitely there, mm. like being a dreamer. Um, what about the other stuff? Would you say like that's what you're honing in on, like vision, selling like people what can be achieved? Is that what you say? Like your main skills are? Right yeah, now? I, I, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think vis- big vision is a thing. I think believing in what we do together. I think rallying the team. I think is really important. Delivering that vision to, to everyone because we all have to pull in the same direction. Mm. How do you do that? Bring people together, especially total team, transparency, yeah. right? Total transparency. I know founders who don't tell their team when they're going for a fundraise and keep it to themselves, or you know. Um, you know, Brooklyn coming up in October. I don't say anything yet. And let's hire one or two in Brooklyn and say to the team, hey, like, you know, launching in Brooklyn, here's new members of staff. You know, just like, well, it's just total transparency top to bottom. So they're all in this, they're all in this together. They know as much as I know. I think that's, I think that's really important to keep, to keep that. Um, obviously, you know, 800 staff, 1,000 staff, difficult. It's um, a different, it's a different journey. Different, that different point, story, yeah. right? But yeah. but the team that are here now pulling blood, sweat and tears and it's just keeping them keeping them informed on, on exactly what's happening, exactly where we're going, how fast we're going, why we're going in this direction. Um is is key. It's really important. And and but I just won't stop, right? I think that's the thing. It's really hard. I seen like uh Jay Paul's fighting Nate Diaz. I seen that and uh, yeah, yeah, it was announced yesterday and I was just like Jay Paul's gonna have a tough time because Nate Diaz will just keep coming forward and will keep getting punched in the face and punched in the face and punched in the face like he's been punched in the face for years. And he just keep moving forward. And I think that's me. I, I say to the team, it's like some, some days, some days it's, it feels like we're wading through like four foot of snow. One foot in front of the other. Lift it out, put it back in. Lift it out, put it back in. That's what it feels like some days. Some days it feels like we're on a fucking snowmobile and we're flying over it, right? And it's just, but it, the important thing is you fall off it and it's just one foot in front of the other again. As long as we're moving forward, that's all that matters. And that's why it's, that's why it works in truth, right? Um, I think, could there be people with more cash to do it and take us on? Yeah, probably. Um, do they understand how hard it is? Definitely not. Different question. Uh, <laughs> definitely not. But, but yeah, it's it, it's good. But it, but the, the thing is, is delivering that service to startups that that means that means a lot to them. That's basically it. Yeah, uh, it's it's um like one of the themes of like the the podcast is the whole thing whereby when you're taking your steps forward, you don't really know what you're doing. It's only when yeah. you look back, it all starts to make sense. Yeah, yeah. And then that journey from yourself as a content creator, cr- content creator. Mm building relationships with startups that's probably paying dividends up until now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what makes you different from, say, if another VC firm or another corporate fund um, made a different studio like this, it's different. It's like you Mm. can tell they're trying to make money out of people, whereas with what you guys are doing, you're actually trying to help, you know? Yeah, It's like a different... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And sometimes you don't don't know. Like, uh, you know, you obviously told me the premise behind this podcast. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. It's like different path, different journey, mm-hmm. different way of doing things. But when, when and you, sometimes you don't even realize it even when you've gone through it, right? Like even today, I'm like, I told a story about, you know, working in IBM, but, but being me and my dad being obsessed with cars yeah. and then going, when it came to the transit van, having the knowledge to go vintage T1 camper van, yep. that's cooler than this. Because I knew cars, I yep. knew like I was like right. So it's T one camper van owners club. Knew someone who knew someone the owners club because I love cars. Got the van, you know, you know. So which led on to startup van, which led on to corporate sponsorship, which led on to three thousand founders, which led on to Dream Factory. It's crazy, right? So so yeah, you're right. So like you don't really know. Mm. And the reality is, today now I look forward and I'm like, oh, we're going to do Brooklyn, but what does that look like? I don't know. 
right? What does what does LA look like? Past Brooklyn, don't know. What mm-hmm. does Miami look like? Not sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Investors watch this eye going, fuck, <laughs> you lying <laughs> fuck, you told us you knew. Um, but, but but yeah, no, we had to cut that out, but not a breeze. <laughs> like, um, but, but I do know that we won't stop. I do know we have the best team to do it. I do know that, you know, I said we hired uh, a great marketing person yesterday, mm-hmm. But in reality, we have 301 marketing people, right? Yeah. We have 300 yeah, founders that we deliver an unbeatable service to who tag us in things, who talk about it, who yeah. shout about it. Unstoppable, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm going to change track a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So with content creation in mm. general, like, give me your most controversial take about the future of content creation. AI is not going to be it. Okay. What would you say that? People are going to be hating that. <laughs> People are going to be lazy fuckers who love AI are going to be hating that. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think, um, I think, you know, we, we use it now internally for certain things, right? Because yeah. um, you need to. You need to adapt. You need to move, um, of course. But people who drop me a mail or investors who say, well, you know, AI is just going to do everything Dream Factory does. It's like People actually say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, oh, well, AI is just going to do all this. I go, well, fuck, definitely won't, right? And and I think, you know, AI-generated content is going to have to be watermarked as AI-generated. There'll definitely be legislation passed for that, no doubt. It already is in some countries, I think. Um, And I think people will crave actual, more than ever, will crave actual, real, people oriented, people-led, Mm. human content. Yeah. They just will crave it because there'll be so many avatars and it'll look good because it'll exponentially grow, um, but people will want to feel like it's real. Mm-hmm. And, I, uh, you know, for sure. I agree. I, I even think there's going to be an increased role of people who are like curators, mm. whereby like they are able to kind of source the internet for any types of content and making sure it's the best of the best because with um, like so much tools available, so many more people are making content and then it can just like water it all down mm. and so you need someone who's going to basically cherry pick what the best things are and yeah. what the things are that are say human which actually do connect with you can make you have that type of feeling um towards it because yeah. um yeah it's like it's like with influencers now just in general or social media mm. there's just so much like twitter there's just so much content that you yeah. can't actually get through it yeah, yeah so you need someone sure. who's going to help you get through the noise yeah sure. and, and i think people people connect with people more right yeah and, and then we see this because you know some companies come in and then they show us like an explainer video that's animated. Um, and it might be like the founder story which they've animated. And it doesn't come close to something Benny produces here that's a real, you can, s- you can see it in their eyes versus something that's, um, something that's an animation or something that will be AI generated. It's a different thing, which means people will watch human-centric content more than AI generated content. And then if someone watches something more, what the social media platforms do? They're going to push that more. They're going to push something you watch more because yeah. the more you watch, the more you're addicted, the more advertising space they can. Mm. It's like simple, it's right? Exactly. Um, so I do, I do get that a lot. I got this in this, in, in the race. You yeah, know? you're um, in there. <laughs> yeah, hung up. I hung up. <laughs> Say that again. I hung up. I was like, that? see ya. Oh wow. uh, <laughs> no, but but it's it's just, it's just it, it will help. It's already helping Dream Factory. Yeah, for sure. In certain ways, right? Um, so I think kind of be adapted to help. Elevate your content, yes. Mm. Can it be adapted to help you write a script? Yes. I think, yeah, especially like, I know for me personally, writing from a blank piece of paper is hard. Yeah, yeah. But then if I have an outline, then I'm, my brain's already working yeah, yeah. from it. So for sure. having that type of helper to help me get to that next best step will just make things quicker. Yeah, make yeah. things quicker. And it will make it easier to come to Dream Factory mm. and shoot content. It will make it cheaper for us to edit your content, it will, right? So, so we can use it to elevate Dream Factory, and use it to elevate the members' content. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyone who says like, you know, there's all these th- threads that keep getting sent. So about, much, like, so much. You know, um, that oh, that's, that, that's, that, that's my hot take. I don't, I don't know how hot it is. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 no. Take. I think it's there. I think it's there. I think um, <sighs> I was reading the other day that when we think about AI and we see how companies are using it, that's probably not going to be the bull case for it. We have to look at what, teenagers mm. people in school are looking for it, how they're making yeah. life easier and quicker because that's essentially where the future is going to be yeah yeah um, for sure one of the past people that i interviewed yesterday he was talking about his own daughter and her in school and now she's not really focused on computer science because computer science now is going to be different from computer science in the next 10 for years sure. so it's like figuring out your way of where you're going to fit within the ecosystem without mm. just like 
I don't know, making yourself irrelevant in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And, yeah. and it's interesting because there's, <laughs> things change so much, right? So and, quickly. And things change quick. I remember I said to my, um, my godson years ago, I was like, you need to learn how to be a developer. That's yeah. it, right? You like computers, learn to be a developer. That's not going away. Now, entry level developers are <laughs> fucked, right? It's like it's not, it's not a thing. Like you ask ChatGPT four to, to like, you know, yeah. develop me an app, an app in Python to do this, 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 and it just doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. fuck. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, so like we, um, you know, we were talking about before, like having that yin and that yang, and then now, a lot of your time, I can tell you're just thinking about content, 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 and the business. Yeah. What's your like grounding mechanism? Like, how do you? kind of de-stress yourself from being high strung all the time? It's tough. I don't really do it, right? Mm. It is It is tough. It's like, I think going back to Ireland does it. Yeah. How um, often do you go back home? Try and go back like every two or three months. Nice. For sure. I used to go back every six weeks pre-COVID and then kind of, you know, get out of a routine or whatever. But I try and go back. I'm going to go back this weekend or next weekend. Mm -hmm. um, Faith, like, going through everything we're going through now, new buildings, New York, Rays, well, it's like <laughs> mental. Um, but it's nice going back because, because it's nice going back because no one gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know right? Right? <laughs> it's nice going back because no one fucking cares. Um, no, no one wants to, like, you know, parents are like, you know, how's things going with Dream Factory? Yeah, class, really good. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Right? And it's like, good. And then that's all they want to know. <laughs> right? They're like, fucking shut up. They're just going to go, how's things going with Dream Factory? Yeah, good. And like, and then they still ask, you go, you you, pay, you paying yourself? Yeah. Yeah, grand. Okay, right, good. Have they visited? Have they seen the sites yet? I haven't seen the site. No, oh, no, no, no. That would be cool, though. Yeah. Uh, that would be cool. <laughs> but that's, I think, go, go, going back is really interesting. And then, and then friends back there, you know, don't give a shit either. Yeah. How's things going? It's no different than me asking them how their day job is, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk about fucking bioscience <laughs> for like okay. three hours, right? I'm like, fucking hell. And he doesn't want to talk to me about content and startups mm. for three hours. Um, so it's nice. It's nice going back and getting a bit uh, getting a bit of that because I live in Shoreditch, Dream Factory's in Shoreditch. I talk to a team, you know, probably, I, I talk to, up to the team probably seven days a week, right? Yeah. In one way, shape or form. Um, and then friends here have companies mm. or are in finance or are interested and in. it's very like heavy. Um, mm. But getting back to Ireland definitely does it. Um, I've been trying to, oh, I bought a burner phone. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case his work doesn't work out. <laughs> Sell drugs. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I bought a burner phone to basically switch off my iPhone. Yeah. Which I haven't, so this is the first weekend of it. So no iPhone for the whole right? weekend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to basically forward all calls yeah. to this like Nokia that I got. Yeah. From Friday at 6 p.m. to Monday morning at 6 a.m. This is Washer in Ireland. This is just going every week. Well, fuck every week. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it every weekend. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be weird. Yeah, but I think mm. I think it's gonna be good. Yeah, uh, I think it's gonna be good. There's have you have you bought yourself a new car yet? Yeah, yeah. What did you get? I bought uh, a classic Mercedes. How classic we're we talking? Uh, 1991. What that the box shape? Car? Yeah, the SL, the 500 SL. That way you didn't drive one of those cars. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's nice. That was cool. Yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, yeah. So, I, I bought, I bought that. It was the one from the, the two packs. Hit him up. Hit him yeah. up. Video. Did you um, juice it up as well, or keeping it exactly as it is? No, it's like yeah, it's standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's AMG, so it's like sport. It, it's cool. Um, but I, but I bought. But it was kind of a cool moment because obviously the last nice car I had, I got, I, I got rid of, so I could actually live and yeah. do the fir my first company. Um, so I went and I, I went and I bought this. Because the math in my head was like, you know, this car won't depreciate, so it's grand. Yeah, so let's go yeah. get it. Um, <laughs> and then me and my girlfriend drove it back to Ireland. Um, and that's where it is now. Nice. So I drove it back. I like, took my dad out for a drive in it because we spent like, my, you know, since birth talking about cars, yeah. right? Uh, so it was cool to bring that back. And uh, he's out there like polishing it and like starting it. You sure he's not driving it when you're not uh, He's like drifting it around like <laughs> back roads. Um, <laughs> but I have to check the tires for when I get back. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it, yeah, it was it was it was such a nice moment doing yeah. that, right? And it wasn't crazy expensive, but it was just something that I was like, it felt like a bit of a, a bit of an achievement getting it. Yeah. No, that's exciting. That's yeah. exciting. So cool. Yeah. So all your head is down just for fundraising. Um. So I'm gonna ask a couple final questions now. Yeah. yeah. So, if you could possess any superpower, what would it be, and how would you use it to work with startups? Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. Um. Probably teleportation. 
<laughs> that's a good one <laughs> probably teleportation I think like that is London, good New York, one. LA, Miami I think that if I can one. just go and do, and and, uh, and bounce around and do that we could expand a lot quicker if we expand a lot quicker we help more startups excellent that is an excellent yeah. answer um, if you could listen to one song for the rest of your life what would it be? <laughs> one song one song most songs will just do my head in after like <laughs> alright um, no 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 I, okay, I, you're yeah. do it, yeah? okay. Benny's song Benny's song what's Benny's song Del Fuego <laughs> Del Fuego I'll put the link to YouTube yeah I've said that, yeah. that through yeah, yeah. Oh, or that <laughs> okay one or the other <laughs> okay and then um, one piece of advice that you wish you never listened to Fucking hell. I that was went in a different direction. <laughs> a piece of advice I never wish I listened to. That's so good. You're welcome. Piece of advice I never wish I listened to. Do you know what? Anything that I've done has has led to this moment, and that's what I keep coming back to, right? Mm-hmm. I think if I if I didn't listen to a piece of advice, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent, I wouldn't be here. Okay. I'm so happy with where I am. I know it's a bit of a shit answer, but like, <laughs> but 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 it's true, right? Yeah, I think even yeah. even like the shitty piece of advice, even if I did follow it, it has some way, shape, or form led me to here, right? Okay, then I'll flip it. Then what's the piece of advice that you give to most people around you when they come and speak to you? Founders. Oh, yeah. Founders or anyone that's like on the cusp of making a decision, whether it is like quitting a job, trying to start. A business if you don't, like if you don't believe in it, don't do it. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe in it, don't do it. Life's too short. Seriously, if you don't, if you don't want to wake up and do it every day, if you don't believe in what you're doing, and, and no, obviously, look, like everyone wants to like, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people want to like sit on the beach and just read, yeah. blah blah. Well, obviously, like that's you know a goal for a lot of people, but I think. The steps to get you there can be different, but I think if you don't if you don't wake up every day and actually believe in what you're doing mm-hmm. and actually enjoy what you're doing, life is is too is too short for it. So once people say, "Hey, I'm gonna launch the business is doing this and this," I kind of dig into like how you landed on this idea because mm-hmm. it's really important, right? And someone just right, I need to. I, I know so many people who whiteboard, which is like a curse for me. <laughs> Because, I, because I'm in this game, I know so many founders, I know investors in the mid-space, people just, that have full-time jobs bring me ideas, yeah. which is cool, I enjoy it. But also it's like, you know, if you sit down and just whiteboard, if you go, if you write money and try and work backwards, mm-hmm. so much harder. So if someone's like, well, I figured like there's a gap in the market, I could probably make this much money a year if I did this. I'm like, well, do you give a shit? Mm. Do you give a shit? Because it's all well and good saying this now, it's all well and good raising money, but you wake up on a Tuesday morning in December and it's fucking cold and it's raining and you have to go across London to do something to like let a staff member go or tell an investor that you've lost all their money but you're going to try and raise more. Or when that day comes, yep. that's when you realise, oh Jesus, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, like, <laughs> I, like, oh, actually, I, I do not care about delivering the service. I don't care about delivering this product. I don't think it makes people all that happy. Whatever it might be, if you if you if you don't love it, don't do it. For sure. Excellent answer. <laughs> cool. Thank you, girl. Appreciate Legend it. Legend dude, yeah, appreciate it. Cheers. <laughs>